Can you say hi? My name is Connor. Yeah? Yes, I'm Mommy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Five More Minutes podcast. This is Shelly Moore coming at you. It is November 18th. And let me tell you, this podcast is very, very late because I've had a little bit of a rough day. Uh, but I'm here. We're getting her done. I'm going to send this to Paul right now because I know that you are looking forward to this podcast. But nothing like last minute, right? Um, okay, so here are my updates for November 2019. So I have to tell you how it is, how great it is to be me right now because since our last video was released, I eat so many baked potatoes and it's the best because I really do like I really do love them. I wasn't just saying it to find a metaphor. I found the metaphor because I love them. Now toppings are getting amazing and um, people are coming up with toppings that I wouldn't even imagine. Like we have cheese and broccoli sauce and we have chili and we have uh, chives and real bacon, not just bacon bits. Like I have been absolutely spoiled, but I also have to tell you that people are taking this metaphor and running with it because we have popcorn bars and salad bars and pizza bars and Halloween just happened. People were dressing up as baked potatoes. Um, I'm getting tons of photos from people who are having baked potato professional development lunches. And I just, I was just so happy that this metaphor hits home because let me tell you, it hit home for me and just that whole big idea about, you know, what can we do that all kids have in common and then we can always add on toppings and whether that's learning whether that's eating, whether that is uh, working out, as Ed said. So I'm so glad. Speaking of food, however, the other exciting thing that's happened was the last time I was on the podcast, we were going to try out the coffee and eggs. Now, uh, I can't even believe the interest we got in that. Uh, there was over 60 people who signed on and we had coffee and eggs together. And the views on YouTube have been the best video strategy posted. So I think that this is working a lot for you. I also think it's working a lot for me. It, it really kind of makes me accountable because sometimes I get into my house and I go into this time warp of nothing exists outside of my home. And I just wear pajamas and I watch Netflix and I work on my book and I forget that the world exists, which is really nice sometimes. But at the same time, um, the video strategies I know are a really, really uh, important thing for the world. Uh, I think a lot of feedback I'm getting is just that we talk a lot about inclusion, but we need more support and resources around how to actually do it. And so I'm committed to working on how to actually do this. And so um, we're going to try out this coffee and egg strategy again. So get a paper and pencil because we have our next date. The next coffee and egg session will be... December 1st. So we're going to start at 9 a.m. I am going to send out the link for that today. So I hope that you can join us. Now at this time, I only have like, I'm just learning how, figuring out how to use Zoom. But at this time, I only have the capacity for 100 people. Now, we've only done this once and we didn't come close to 100. But I think that because it was so popular, we might. So make sure you sign on early because I don't know how to increase that yet without paying like a gazillion dollars a month. So um, send me an email if you know like an either another platform we could use um, in case that we do it increase to over 100 but right now uh, we have 100 max so make sure you sign on as soon as you can if you want to be a part of that but if you don't get in don't worry because um, I post those on the YouTube channel and those are available free access for everybody okay so that is the coffee and eggs update. Okay, so my other update for you is I, I set a goal this year because I don't know about you, but if you're in the teaching world, you know that you go to school and then it's September and then you blink and then it's October and then you like wake up in the morning and all of a sudden it's Christmas break. Like it's such a fast part of the year. It's not like March. March is like 97 days long. But the first part of the year, it goes so fast. And I always find that, you know, by the time the Christmas holidays arrive, I feel like I've missed it. I feel like I haven't had time to really enjoy it and and enjoy kind of that holiday season. So this year I set a goal and I don't want to feel like I rush. And so I actually built in some days for decorating. Like in my calendar, I put this is when I'm decorating. This is when I'm going to see Frozen 2. This is when I'm doing all of the holiday and Christmas events that I want to do, including craft fairs, um, skating on Grouse Mountain, etc. So rather than saying, oh yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that, I'm making a point of putting it in my calendar. So my very first uh, holiday Christmas event, because um, we start this after Remembrance Day, was this week I had a goal to decorate start decorating our house for Christmas now this is the first Christmas I've ever had in my house like I've never decorated a mantle before 
So yesterday, um, I had to like kind of talk down my wife a bit because messes make her anxious. And if anyone knows me at all, that in order for me to make something great, I have to be messy. So all of the Christmas decorations exploded all over the house and she had to breathe through it for about nine hours. But by the end of the night, it actually looks pretty good. And I had, make a, I had made a list of items that I needed to go buy. And on that was, oh, I want to buy like boughs, like real boughs because I've never actually lived in a place that I was allowed to have like a real tree and real plant like not real plants but like real Christmas stuff because in your apartments you often can't have that so I'm like I want a real tree I want to have real boughs and then I realized I'm like why am I buying the boughs I could just go outside and cut my own boughs so this was quite the adventure I got to go and navigate the monsoon that's happening outside of our house and I cut my own boughs for my own mantle and it is just I just, I feel like such an adult. So I will post a picture of my very first mantle that I ever decorated. Uh, we put up lights. Uh, we, uh, Jessica's mom was here and my friend Kate was here. And so we had a little roast beef dinner because I love Yorkshire pudding. I'm going to have to find a metaphor that involves Yorkshire pudding so that people make me Yorkshire pudding for, um, professional development lunches and because it was so good we had this amazing meal and we chatted Jessica's mom just went to Australia so we looked at photos uh she got chased by wild turkeys like fun was had all around so it ended up being a really lovely night and really enjoyed kind of just the, the time of family and, and being s spent to enjoy those holidays so that happened and it was in my calendar and it worked so this is a good strategy for me but the other thing that we I, I mentioned this is the monsoon that's happening now we have not lived on Bowen for the heavy rain season apparently that's what we're in it but we have this little tiny creek that doesn't even run in the summer and right now it looks like there is like Niagara Falls outside of the side of our house like it is whitewater rafting material and it is coming so close to the edge of our property and it is fascinating and it's starting to like now it's a good thing we live on a mountain because the water can just go down but there are creeks forming that I didn't even know were creeks so it is very exciting and I will show you the video because it is like we are living Indiana Jones material right now it's so fun okay so that's the update with me um let's see here so the last time we talked, the new video that was posted was, what is your genius? And really the whole point of that video was to start to expand our definition of what it means to be a genius and what it means to have strengths. Because education is just not a really good job, doesn't really do a good job of, I mean, using strengths. I mean, I can, I can, I can, I can say that... Sometimes we do a good job of getting to know what the strengths are, but even like when I think back to when I was school-based, I didn't do a very good job of actually using the strengths to help me plan and to inform my instruction. So this has been a really big goal is, first of all, how do we figure out what strengths are? You know, where are those little genius moments in our kids where they are really like, this is a moment where I have something to contribute to the world and really expand that definition. Like, so this isn't just like for kids who are successful based on a medical definition that was probably, you know, created by an old white straight man. And, you know, just being like, no, like there are, there's a little, there's strength in all of us. There's a genius in all of us. And, you know, how do we find those moments where we can let those, those moments shine? And, and when I was starting to like dig into this and, you know, I go through this whenever I'm thinking about my podcast, I'm like, okay, so who can I talk to who is going to really, really highlight this big idea? And as soon as I thought about um, kind of like what's the genius in everybody and how do we find them, I thought of a little guy named Connor. Now he's six years old. Uh, Connor lives with Down syndrome. And I met him last year. Uh, actually, actually, I didn't meet him last year. I met his mom last year. The first time I met him was actually this weekend for this podcast. But uh, I met this family and, you know, got to know a little bit about them uh, just through social media. And I went to a conference, the Down Syndrome, the Canadian Down Syndrome Society Conference in Victoria last year. And I just like started to learn about this little guy. Now, Connor is six and he's in grade one. And you're going to learn about him and his mom. But they are just this amazing, incredible little duo and there is um connor has a little brother named owen and uh incredible dad named kieran and so this this little family of four um i've been kind of keeping track of them because they are you know really making a difference in this world and how we see and because i think connor you know he has it is so obvious how you know the gifts within him help others and which is what we were talking about in the video and 
the little genius inside of him. And so when I actually got to meet the family, the whole family, I've met Danielle before, but to meet the whole family, you know, to walk into this home that's just absolutely filled with love and celebration. And I was like looking at this little guy and this little family and I being like, there's so nothing to fear here. And I think that that's kind of, you know, a big point in this is that I think um, our fear of the unknown and our, and our othering that kind of takes over in this world, it prevents us from seeing the genius and prevents us from seeing the strengths and the good. And so um, I hope you really enjoy this conversation that I had with Connor and Danielle because, you know, they just, um, you know, if we can just open up our definitions of what it means to be, be, be a genius and to be good at something, we're going to include a whole lot more people, um, including this little guy, Connor, who is now imprinted onto my heart. Let me tell you this. And um, yeah, so I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to introduce you to Connor and Danielle. So I hope you enjoy and I will catch you on the other side. So here I am today with two of my very good friends. I am here with Danielle and Mr. Connor. Connor, you want to say hi? Say hi. Hi. Hi, Connor. So I am so lucky. So I am currently taking over their kitchen. Yep, you are. We are. Just ignore everything <laughs> around you. <laughs> no, for, this is a real life kitchen. Yeah, man. this is a very real life kitchen. So my first, con- my first question is for Connor. Connor, hey, ask you a question. Oh. Oh. So my first question is, first of all, what's your name? Connor. Connor. And say here. What's your name? Daddy. Daddy. And wh- how old are you, Connor? Eight. Oh my. No, goodness. you're not eight. How, how old are you? Six. Yeah. Six years old. You know, you're tall enough to be eight years old. You totally fooled me. <laughs> and what grade are you in, Connor? Yeah. Grade one. And so I'm, I'm wondering, what are some things that you that you love? What are some things that you like? What do you like to do? Pizza. You like oh, pizza? pizza. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me and too. What else do you like? What else do you like? What do you like? Just say hair. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Really. And do you like princesses? Do you like princesses? Who's your yeah, favorite but, princess? Um, Ariel. Ariel. Ariel's your favorite. Oh, yeah. So good. Do so you good. love Aurora? Do you love Aurora? Can you say Aurora? Aurora. And yeah. Aurora is she from Frozen? No, yeah. she's from Sleeping Beauty. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Who's the princess in Frozen? Who's in Frozen? Mm. Elsa. No, no. Yeah. Elsa. 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 And? No, no, no. Mommy. No? Mm. Who's in Frozen? Ella. Anna? No. Anna and Elsa. Mm-hmm. I think so. I love yeah. that one. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Connor is loving this one. Yeah. yeah. And so Connor, do you have do you have friends at school? Yeah. Yeah. Can you think of any of your friends' names? Who are your friends? Oh. Who are your friends? Say Clark. Yeah. Say her name. Lock. Oh. Clark and Blair. Bla- Blair. Yeah. Bla- Lanta. And Ariana. No. Lanta. Lucy? No. Okay. You have so many friends. So many friends. And no. Jazzy. Jazzy's a good friend Your to Your friends us. have Bye-bye. great names, too. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Connor, what are some things you do at school? What do you like at school? What do you like to do at school? Hey, look at Ma. What do you like to do? Yeah. Do you like music? Oh, <laughs> yes. Music. You like Miss... What's her name? Pochak. Pochak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. School's so fun. Isn't it so fun? Do you love school? Say your words. Uh, do you love Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Connor needs to be on a video podcast. <laughs> yes. So you can see his perfect little face right now. <laughs> uh, I love that. Exactly. I totally agree. Okay. So, Connor, thank you for interviewing with me. Can you say thank you? Hey. You and you're welcome. Yeah. You do, do you want to say hi to the world? Say hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure we get a picture of Connor so that everyone can see how perfect this little person is over here. Do you like photos? Do you like to take a picture? 
The best smile yeah. I've ever seen. Mm, yeah. Ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Connor. You did a great job. Yeah. Say, good job. Yeah. This one. So that's our friend Connor. We love him. Now he gets a popsicle because he did such a good job. <laughs> I know. I know. So good. Now he's blowing us kisses, the world, just so you know. So now I have, now I'm going to talk to mom. Mm -hmm. so, hi. Hi. <laughs> so mom's name is Danielle. Yep. Danielle, why don't you tell the world a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Danielle. I am the mom to two beautiful boys. My eldest, Connor, is six. He has Down syndrome. And we live in Burnaby, British Columbia. You do. And it's filled with trees. It's amazing. Yeah. We're nestled here in the forest. It <laughs> it's is so good, pretty right? awesome. I know. I know. So tell me about Connor. Connor uh, is... Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I think uh, you can tell. Born yeah. for the stage. Oh, totally. 100%. 100%. <laughs> he is um, a very passionate little boy about what he likes and what he does not like. Oh, yes. He is... Um, He's driven by, um, he's motivated by uh, the things that he likes and that's how we get him to do a lot of what we need and, totally. and want and he is determined and stubborn and gorgeous. <laughs> and he's <laughs> nodding being like, yeah, you got yeah. that right, mom. And so what are some of his, what are some of his passions and strengths? Um, Connor is driven by music and motion oh, yes. and uh, we, we use a lot of that as his reward system. Yeah. And... Um, he is empathetic and mm -hmm. friendly and he loves people and he loves your attention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he also needs his own television yeah, channel. He loves to be the center of attention. Are you a Leo by any chance? Uh, what? Me. No, no, a Gemini. Gemini. He's a Gemini. Perfect. Yeah. Dual personalities, which is actually totally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Leo and I'm like, we could totally get along. So, okay, because, okay, so Danielle, the reason I wanted to come here today mm -hmm. is because, as you know, I have this YouTube channel because I also like to be the center of attention, like your son. <laughs> and it's also way more fun to make YouTube videos than it is to finish a PhD, you know. Yeah. Just, you, you know, know way yeah. more fun. But this, this month's video is about strengths. I was thought you were going to say procrastination. <laughs> no, but that should be next month. <laughs> That's so true. And strengths, so, and perfect. So, so talking about strengths, mm -hmm. like, everyone has a genius, and everything, everyone has something to bring. Do you have you heard of Monique Grace Smith before? She's an author. No. So she's a children's book author, and she has a quote that I love, mm -hmm. and it says, um, "You can't give gifts away until you know what gifts you bring." Oh, isn't that beautiful? That is. No, totally. And so whenever I talk to kids about like, you know, what, what are you good at? What do you bring? Yeah. And also like, how does that help others? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if you talk about kind of like Connor and his strengths around empathy and music and yeah. all of these things, you know, what I, the reason why I wanted to talk to you is because what I think you do a really good job of is not just acknowledging Connor's strengths, but you also help other people see yeah. how that's a contribution for his community. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so my question to you is like, what? You've talked about his strengths and what he's really good at. So, like, how do you see that contributing to his communities? Well, you know, in in school, it's just such, I feel anyway, to have him um, is such a gift to other students in his mm -hmm. school. So that his classmates, his friends, uh, the people in his community um, are, are seeing difference and um, the beauty in difference. And that, you know, there is a strength in that because with that, he's bringing kindness and he is bringing, you know, empathy and joy. Mm -hmm. And he is just seeing the good in you and the beauty yeah. in you. And he's not focusing on any of your negative or um, your, any of your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a really great thing when you can see his strengths and that, that mirrors you and shows your strengths. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's something that's really overlooked in this whole inclusion conversation. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't just about, I mean, yes, there's a human rights element to it, yes. but it's more than that. It's not, Oh, absolutely. You know, it's not just about, we have to do this because the law says, but mm -hmm. if we don't do this, the community is missing out on really incredible people. It really is. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and he is a pretty incredible uh, person and what he brings is pretty incredible. You know, just, just being kind yeah, and you yeah. know our world needs so much more oh of that goodness, you know so and uh just if you can start children young with that that's just going to grow mm -hmm. within them and and blossom yeah and i find like especially kids who have grown up with kids who have yeah. disabilities 
they never have a problem including them. No, absolutely you know I mean? the not. The problem yeah. is the adults. There's this yeah. fear yeah. because often adults don't didn't have the opportunity to yeah. grow up. Which, it's something different yeah. and people are afraid of, of exactly. 100%. People are, you yeah. know, I look at his relationship with his brother and I look at his uh his uh how his brother treats him mm -hmm. and it's exactly how one of my siblings would have treated him you yeah. know like he yeah. doesn't see connor as something different no, and that's brother. exactly yeah. and that i think is is going he's mm -hmm. going to grow up to be a pretty amazing kid because of that 100 oh, yeah so what are some things that you do to support connor's strengths hmm that's a good question what are some of connor's strengths <laughs> what, what are your I just strengths? wish everyone could Hi. see his face. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to signing up for dance class tomorrow. <gasps> yes, you are. And uh, we're going to get him moving and shaking. Um, yeah. And we also think that's going to be a great opportunity for the other kids in his dance totally. class. Um, I am... Uh, bit of a mama bear. Yeah. I uh, make, like to make sure that the school is well mm -hmm. equipped with all of the information <laughs> yes. that they need. 100%. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a type A organizer. You're very um, organized. It's a strength of yours. <laughs> thank you. Not many people see that, but I think so. Um, you know, we, we make sure that he is surrounded by um, kind people mm -hmm. that love him, that want to see him succeed that want to support him and just help Connor be the best possible Connor mm -hmm. he can be. And you know, if you're not, if you're not on team Connor, then it's okay. We're moving on off yeah. of you. You don't need to be on our bus. No. See you later. See you later. You know, like <laughs> well, maybe we'll circle back for you when you well, get. <laughs> exactly. It's a bus. Well, and actually, and you kind of mentioned this already, but you brought up like one thing that I picked up right away on things you do to support him mm -hmm. is the profile. Yes. So, I have to tell you about this. So I don't even remember where I saw this. Was it on Instagram? It might have been on Instagram, so, yeah. Okay, so I, I follow Danielle, obviously, mm -hmm. because her family is amazing. And she posts this Blushing over here. Picture. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> I haven't even got to the point about when I first met you. Um, but this 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 profile, which I'll share, I'll share on Instagram, but um, she posted this beautifully, like, it looks professional. Oh, I is it Canva? To um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, I got a, there was a link in yeah, a, yeah. a Down Syndrome Facebook group. Yes. And, um, you know, followed the link and did my thing. Totally. So Canva, if you don't know, is an online kind of like digital <laughs> what's, what's template? it? Template? Templates where you can yeah. create flyers yes. or you can create like advertisements. Yes. But what Danielle did is she used it to create a profile for Connor. And so on it, it has, you know, this is a beautiful picture of Connor. It has, you know, things that he's good at, things that he likes, things that don't work for Connor. But it also has kind of like his, his the vision, like the, yep. big, the big picture. Absolutely. And my favorite part is things I'm working on, things yep. you can help me with. Yep. You know, and I think, you know, it's a one pager that is such an easy strategy for families and parents. But I show this to teachers all the time. We're like, we yep. need to do this for all of our kids too. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Because it becomes his voice. Yes, you know? exactly. And um, it was and still is very important that anybody on Connor's team is aware of this. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we recently um, started working with um, new care providers and um, it was one of the first things that we gave yeah. um, them because, mm -hmm. you know, it's he doesn't have a voice. So it's really yeah. important for me to convey that, you know, he is a person, he yeah. has strengths, he has weaknesses, and it's okay to acknowledge that he has those weaknesses to work on. Mm -hmm. And here are the strategies mm -hmm. that can get best, help him succeed. Yeah. Do you want to hear my revelation about weaknesses? Oh, uh, yeah. I call them new things now. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Listen to this. Okay. This is from Faye Brownlee. She's like an educational, like, matriarch. Okay. okay you ready? Yeah. So, because I grew up calling them weaknesses, mm -hmm. too. And then I heard this new word. And I'm like, mm. so I've heard it stretch. Have you heard this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, but why? Yeah. Right? Like, what's the rationale there? Because I'm like, you know, I don't think it's bad to know what your weaknesses are. Yeah. So I call up Faye Brownlee. And I'm like, Faye Brownlee, what's with this word? Stretch. Stretch. And she's like, oh, it's very important. I'm like, okay, tell me. She's like, okay. So she's like, when I think of a weakness, she's like, I think of a broken ankle. Mm -hmm. You know, if you break your ankle, it's weak. Yeah. But it's, but it's because it's weak. It may never get stronger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's not, you work to build around it. Yeah. Because your, your ankle will never be as strong as it was. Yeah. 
She's like, that's what I think Hello. of when I say Hello, Connor. <laughs> She's like, but if you think of the word stretch, stretches hurt, mm -hmm. but the more you do them, the stronger you get. Yes. Isn't that good? That is amazing. So I know, so people are like strength and stretches, strength and stretches, but I didn't get it, but I'm yeah. like, that totally makes sense. Yes. Because things that are hard for us, we can still do them. Mm -hmm. But they're hard. They're hard. That's why it's a stretch. Yeah. But the more we work on it, the better we yeah. get at it. As yeah. opposed to, and this is part of the IEP conversation, yeah. right? So often the goals that are in IEPs are based on weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids have no control over yeah. that. It's yeah. like a broken ankle, exactly. right? Exactly. So how do we choose goals that are based on things that are hard? Yeah. Because it's absolutely okay to work on things. Yeah. Like it's hard for me to wake up. <laughs> But I still need to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to put my pants no, on every day. 100%. And, you know, like, in the, so this book that's coming out, like, I interviewed a lot of parents. And I'm just like, yeah. you know, what are the barriers for IEPs? And they're like, I just feel like all IEPs are just reminding me of all the things my kid can't do. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right? And there's yeah. got to be a way to change that. But also it's misunderstood then. That means we never work on things that are hard. Which yeah. isn't true either. And exactly. So like, you said that, like, exactly. It's totally okay for us to work on things that are hard. Exactly. But let's really figure out what those things are. Because yeah. Also, can't be things we can't do. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. But, I know. We have to set him up for success. One hundred percent. And one thing that we have learned with Connor is, if it is too hard, he will give up and walk away. Oh, and everybody we have, will. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we have to set him. will throw something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to set it up in increments where it's achievable, totally. and he reaches that. Um, he reaches that goal. He feels proud about himself, yeah, yeah. and he wants to go on and totally. wants to continue on. It can't you know, be too hard. exactly. It can't be too easy. Yeah, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Totally. Exactly. Yes. That's when you know, like I think about losing weight sometimes. Oh, I'm not thinking right. about the, the big number I've got to get to. I got to focus on what I can do this steps. week. Yeah. So and it's okay that it's hard. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Oh, you just yeah. well, you understand each other. Okay. So here's the other thing I wanted to talk, talk uh -huh. about because not only. Does this profile, I think, really mm -hmm. target Connor's strengths? But there's another thing you do. Yeah. That I've never seen before that blew my mind. Okay? The dear parents? The dear parents. <laughs> so here's the thing, and we talked about this a little bit. Like, kids don't have a problem with difference. Yeah. It's adults who it's are the terrified. Adults, yes. They're scared because yeah. it's different. Yeah. So why don't you tell the world about your dear parents letter? You know, it started, um, again, I can't take credit for it because I got the idea from um, a supported child development meeting mm -hmm. actually um that they had a parent panel mm -hmm. and uh, one of the parents had had done it one day a year and suggested that you know kids with special needs do this letter and uh so I started and it was exactly that it was a way to introduce us to um the classmates of Connor um they, their parents mm -hmm. because I wanted their kids to go home and ask questions and I wanted yeah, their parents yeah. not to be afraid yeah. to answer those questions to be honest if they didn't know the answers yeah. to those questions and also feel like they could reach out to us yeah. to say hey um my kid asked this question I don't know how to answer, answer it What's the best way of, of mm -hmm. doing that? Because um, what I love about that letter is that you kind of like talk about Connor in the letter, mm -hmm. but you almost kind of say like, it's okay that you don't know. Yeah, it's almost like, absolutely. It's okay that you're fearful, but let's get better at that. Yeah, right? absolutely. And my favorite part, the list of resources on her back. <laughs> she includes a list of books to read with your child. Yeah, well, like, like come on. We love reading about differences so and our good. library is so full of them. And yeah. it's the one way I think, not only for Connor's brother, um, living with uh, a brother with special needs, mm -hmm. but engaging in all aspects of his life you know bedtime reading we're reading about differences mm -hmm. you know like when we go out in public we're, we're talking about differences mm -hmm. and the more you reinforce and the more you talk about it and the more you Must normalize it totally. i'm using air quotes here yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know it's yeah. just it, it's, it's not going to be exactly yeah 100 okay but that's not all you do oh my gosh you're making this me sound fine. a lot more no. amazing. No, Danielle, you don't understand. This is amazing. Okay. But it's like every week I'm like, who? T Danielle, again, <laughs> knocking my socks off. Okay, you like two more things on my list. Oh, there's okay? two more. Okay. So don't worry. This is about you mm -hmm. and how amazing you are. So just, you know, okay. keep well, blushing. But yeah, I was it. about to say people out there be grateful you can't see the color of so my face. The other thing that you did once that blew me away, uh -huh. and this was over two days. Okay. Okay. On Instagram, uh -huh. you said 
that a girl in Connor's class yes. grabbed Connor's hand at recess. Can you yeah. tell what happened? So it was actually, um, I think it was the first week yeah, of it was school. In September. It was totally. in September. It was the first week of school. And it was, uh, we did gradual entry yeah. for the first week even though we didn't have to because he's in grade one now. Yeah. Um, and it was the first day that I was leaving him for yeah. an extended period of time. And Connor wasn't cool about that. He, yeah, he, he wasn't pleased with that. And he was trying really hard to be brave. Mm -hmm. And he was trying uh, to put on a brave face for me. But the second they started to go inside, he just crumbled and Honey. the the floodworks opened yeah, yeah. and he was still trying to be brave because he was, you know, he wasn't running away. He was uh, coming back to me. He was yeah. still going with the crowd. Um, but you could tell that he was just broken and it was mm -hmm. breaking me inside. Totally, totally. And all I wanted to do was run up to him and be like, okay, let's just go home. Totally. It's fine. <laughs> we don't have to do school. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, just right at that point where I was, you know, about to, collapse. Um, his little friend Jazzy, um, who I think is a few grades uh, older mm -hmm. than him, mm -hmm. saw that he was having a really hard time and uh, walked over to him and took his hand and uh, patted him on the back. And I could see that she, you know, bent down and whispered something to him that will remain between them forever. But I'm yeah. pretty sure it was just words of encouragement yeah, being, yeah. it's okay, you know, mm -hmm. you've, we've got this. And uh, they went inside together. And, and you captured this on video. I know. <laughs> and so you see this, like, girl yeah. who's not old. Like, yeah. we're not talking about a teenager coming and helping no. a little guy. No, like, they're very close in age. Yes. And she comes over, and you see it. Whisper something, and, yeah. they grab, and then off they go. And off I'm they like, go. I didn't even know that whole part about you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so then I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. I'm yeah. crying tears of inclusion. Joy. Yeah. But then the next day, the next day, I, I thought see about Boston, it. Yeah. Like, what did you do? I wrote a thank you letter to Jazzy's mom. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> well, a thank you letter to her mother. So tell everyone about that. It's just so important for me, for you know, as a any ch any parent of a child wants their child to be loved. All of us want mm -hmm. to be loved and accepted and included. And, you know, especially as a parent that's different, sending them off into the world, we just want them to be loved and accepted and seen for the beauty that they are. And it's super hard sometimes when they are rejected through no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, a he has a lot of pairs um, that play alongside him mm -hmm. that don't, Re they don't say anything negative or do anything negative, but Connor's just there. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't actively participate in including him. Mm -hmm. He's just sort of there. And, oh, that's Connor. And this was the first time that I was actively seeing somebody bring him into their circle mm -hmm. and open up their world um, to, be, to just let them know that, let him know that it was okay. And it was, it was just so beautiful to see. And in that moment, I just had so much gratitude for her mother and her parents that were obviously doing something right, mm -hmm. you know, raising their child um, to be this beautiful, kind human being that when they see somebody struggle, it's okay to reach out and help. Mm -hmm. And I just had an overwhelming sense of, I just needed to tell her mother, thank you. Yeah. And how important it meant to us That's and how it that. meant to, to me. And that, you know, if if she could do more of that. Well, that just sounds so, like, perfect. Yeah. It, was, you know it was a great moment. You know what's going to be amazing? You know who's going to remember that forever? Jazzy's mom. Jazzy. Jazzy. And Jazzy's Jazzy, mom. Yeah. Jazzy's mom. Yeah. And in education, we call that, like, positive reinforcement. Do you well, know what I mean? Well, like I ended up seeing um, Jazzy's mom yeah. uh, a few days later, and she came to thank me for my thank you note. Yeah. So we were just totally. doing this circle of thank yous. Yeah, and. Yeah, yeah. She said that, you know, it, it just really touched her mm -hmm. and um, re exactly what you said, positive reinforcement, yeah. that they were they were doing something great and they had an and awesome you daughter. You got them. Yeah. You got them. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I really like about that is that there's a lot of talk right now around the, like, the importance of advocacy, like mm -hmm. self-advocacy, which 100%. Yeah. But sometimes we think that self-advocacy means you only fight for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think in inclusive conversations, you can't just fight for yourself. you got to fight for the community. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I think that's one thing I really caught about that because I think what I'm realizing is the, one, the number one thing you can advocate for as a parent yeah. who has a child with disabilities is 
to fight for the communities that they belong to, yeah. not just the kids themselves. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, what you did is you created an advocate in Jazzy. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And now you're not the only one fighting. Yeah. Now Jazzy's going to fight. And Absolutely. Jazzy's going to fight. And so it's kind of like <laughs> sneaky backdoor self-advocacy. Yeah. yeah. But it's so much more powerful than often what happens, which is the fight. Mm-hmm. The fight. Yeah. And that it, it turns people the other way. As yes. opposed to how do we catch people, build them up. Yeah. But also like supporting all of Connor's classmates to be like, this is how. And you did yeah. that through the letter. You do that through the thank you card. You do that through like all the work well, you thank do. You. Which I think is is something that's really important for parents to yeah. do sometimes, you yeah. know? Well, it's amazing to just instill in, in children that kindness has its own reward, you yeah. know? And it's not a physical object. You don't need to get some gummies or candy at the end of the day totally. for being kind. Mm-hmm. There's there's different ways of, of being rewarded for just being a decent human being. Seriously. <laughs> in authentic ways. Yes, exactly. Yes. I, I remember there was a... <laughs> This is real. This is real life, yes. people. Sorry, um, no, okay. but I remember, like, you know, early in the inclusion conversation, where there would be things like, "Oh, if you play with this kid, you mm-hmm. get an extra fifteen minutes of recess." Like, yeah. that's not what we're talking about right here. Right. I mean, we're not, <laughs> yeah. I don't, if I was that person, I don't yeah. want people to get something for hanging out with. Well, me, exactly. You, know? you want it to come from a genuine place, totally, where they want to hang out with you. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you want to be a genuine yeah. friend. I don't want your kid to play with my kid just because I'm they telling you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or telling you that it's the right thing yeah, to do. Yeah. I want it to come from inside yeah. and have this amazing feeling. Yeah. And that's why I reached out to Jazzy's mom yeah. because that came from a genuine place. She mm-hmm. didn't have to do it. Mm-hmm. And it was just, oh my gosh, I'm, it still it gets perfect. me all emotional. No, totally, totally. And I just want to let you know that Connor is in the background getting so excited because they're looking for Make It Rain yeah. with Ellen. Big shout out to Ellen. He's a huge <laughs> fan. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so there's one more thing on my agenda to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of why I kind of came over here in the first place. Yeah, so you, you got... Dropped off gifts I, yeah. for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the other thing about Den... Okay, so let's kind of... Okay, so how I met you mm-hmm. was I was the keynote at the Canadian Down Syndrome Conference yes. this, this past year, which was in Victoria. Yes. But along with me was Tamara Taggart, who yes. was another mom of a little guy with Down Syndrome. Amazing woman. And what I realized is that there is like this like underground moms group of kids with Down Syndrome. Oh, there and totally like, is. <laughs> I want to be a part of this club because I show up to this conference and I'm like you, you guys are amazing <laughs> they're so much fun and you didn't yeah. you guys didn't know me you no didn't know me no. All happy sudden, hour I got invited to happy hour with the moms I'm like I'm not even a mom and I'm a part of this crew you will forever be no, a part of I the group I felt so included <laughs> by the moms well we're all about inclusion oh my goodness and so we spent hours in that yes. restaurant yeah. dabbing and chatting pretty much until closing and, totally, yeah. totally for multiple nights in a row yes <laughs> <laughs> but through that process, I found out about something that Danielle does, which yeah. is very cool. Um, and it is called Baskets, Baskets of, of Love. Love. So why don't you tell everyone what Baskets of Love is? Baskets of Love, uh, we are a nonprofit organization in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Um, we welcome babies born with Down syndrome to the world in a soft, gentle way. Yeah, um, yeah. Just to say, hey, welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah. We are here when you need us. Yeah. And if you don't, that's okay, too. That's okay, too. And so why is that important to you? You know, we didn't have the greatest start to our journey. Uh, You mentioned Tamara Tamara Taggart. Things turned around a little bit for us Mm -hmm. um, after I met Tamara. But before that, it was a really dark and lonely time. Mm -hmm. And through this journey, I've learned that... um, Sorry, one second. No problem. Buddy, you can go watch it with Papa, but Mama... I'm recording here, and so we can't hear the YouTube, okay? It has to be <laughs> quiet. You want to just watch it on silent? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. You can watch it. Um, I forget where I was. So um, just the, the beginning, your, yeah. the start of your journey. Yeah. yeah, start of the journey wasn't great. And um, yeah. Yeah. I learned that, you know, I wasn't the only one um, going through or feeling alone because that's what kind of happens like you know if you don't know it, don't like, know i didn't know anybody know with down syndrome before totally. uh, yeah and um, you, you know you mentioned before about fear full of it didn't know anything about down syndrome it was different it yeah. was scary yeah 
didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, yeah. but now all of a sudden it was being thrust upon us. Without any education. With, exactly. Totally. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what we, what education we were being fed was a lot of statistics, a yeah, lot of numbers, yeah. a lot of medical jargon. We just had no yeah. interest in needing yeah, or, yeah. or wanting to know. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like it could be better. Yeah. Like I wasn't, and I don't think that the baskets are necessarily the answer to it all, but it's a part of a puzzle to make, or yeah. part of the solution to make the start of our journey a little bit better. Well, I mean, okay, so there's another podcast. Her name is Jenya Stevens, mm -hmm. and I was talking on her podcast, and we were talking about, like, the importance of presuming competence, right? Mm -hmm. And how, like, there's a lot of people assume that kids can't do things yeah. all the time. Yeah. And so she's like, well, why do you think that's changing? And so she said to me something very interesting. She says a lot of the statistics and information that families are given about kids with disabilities, especially Down yeah. syndrome, are from studies that happened in institutions. Yes, exactly. And so she's like, well, of course they're not going to perform. Like, yeah. they're barely getting... <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly gotta, so i mean it's totally yeah. different scenarios when kids are being brought up in like thriving love absolutely and you know a huge part of the baskets and what i love most about delivering the baskets is when i can bring connor with me yeah and i can show them yeah. hey look, look at this amazing six-year-old yeah. it's totally okay there's gonna be ups there's gonna be downs yeah. you know i'm not hiding that this is going to be a struggle and this totally. is going to be hard but it's also not the end of the world yeah, yeah, yeah. and that you know you're going to find a strength that you need yeah. and you didn't know you had yeah yeah and sometimes it's going to suck and you don't mm -hmm. like down syndrome there are days that i don't yeah um but there's also so much joy and mm -hmm. so much love and your world is just opened up to this amazing community. Totally. You're going to be part of, you're going to be part of a pretty cool club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some amazing mamas in it. Well, I have to tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Now I realize this is getting going to be broadcast, but uh -huh. I feel like this is the time to tell the story. Okay. So, <laughs> now you have me nervous. Jessica might kill me. Okay. But you know, so Jessica and I are like, we're try trying to figure out like this family. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's a little different, but uh -huh. you, know, you have to manufacture it yep. a little bit differently. So part of this was we had to see a counselor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the appropriateness of that later. But yep. wh why I'm telling you this now is that the counselor said, you know, how did you decide on a donor? And I said, like, half jokingly, half seriously, well, the first thing I look for is if they have Down syndrome in their family. Because they're like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> like, absolutely. Yeah. And then she's like, all serious. She's like, why would you say that? And I'm like, because well, they're <laughs> gifts to the planet. Yeah. And she goes, she's like, but why would you wish life to be hard on someone? I'm like, sweetie, life is hard on women. Mm -hmm. We don't just stop having girls. Exactly. You know what I mean? This yep. whole like misunderstanding that Absolutely. this is a burden of a uh -huh. life. And it's so wrong. Well, and that's what infuriates me totally. so much about the start of this process is, yeah. is that I'm not a, by no means a professional. I hold yeah. no medical degree, but what, I do have is a degree in being a mother of a child with Down syndrome. Yeah. And which is sometimes a whole lot more ninety nine percent of the doctors. time, the doctors that are delivering yeah. a diagnosis, the doctors that are counseling you, mm -hmm. the nurses in the room do not have a child with Down syndrome. No. They do not know a person with Down syndrome, but yet they are an authority on educating you about life with Down syndrome. Totally. And with inaccurate statistics. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like that's where the baskets come in, in that you're going to get a lot of statistics and medical yeah. information. And you know what? Rightly so. You do need to know that. But you there's know, no this, stories. There's no stories. There are no, yeah. hey, it's okay. Yeah. But, you know, one day you're going to watch your child watch Ellen's Make It Rain in the background <laughs> that will bring him nothing but, but joy. joy. <laughs> and but you get five minutes of silence. Totally. But I think that, like, like that's so real for all kids. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's why this Baskets of Love really stood out to me because I think that it's really meeting a need for parents that's very much overlooked in a yeah. lot of communities yeah. where the information, like, if you don't, you only know what you know. And if you only know yeah. fear, you're going to feel fear. Absolutely. And so I think what those baskets are doing is I think that they are telling a different story mm -hmm. for kids. Giving a little peek inside totally. uh, of the world. To know this is not a scary thing. Sometimes yeah. it's hard, but so is just Absolutely. parenting in general. It, you know? it, well, that's just it. Totally, is this that what's, yeah. what's unfair is that, you know, doctors think they've got what life is down, with Down syndrome is like all mm -hmm. figured out at the very beginning yeah, when yeah, your baby's yeah. just being born. And what they realize is they're assuming a life 
of a child when the baby born next to them yeah. could have challenges later on. You just never know. But you yeah, never know, yeah, yeah. but they're getting a hearty congratulations and so happy yeah, for you. Go out the door, you totally. know? And I just think like, there's so many things to be upset up in the world. Yeah. Having a child <laughs> is not one of them. So, so that's what I love. So where can people, is there a place people can go to find out more information? Absolutely. About, yeah. So we have a website, um, Baskets of Love DS. Dot com okay, because I'll post that for people. somebody stole the other one. Uh, no. Um, so and we're also on Instagram, Baskets of Love DS. Perfect. And, and Facebook too. But yeah. yeah. No, and I think that's good, which is why I'm like, I will supply you books for the rest of my life because... I love you. No, honestly, I think it's... it's I think there's a lot of, of scared parents who don't need to be scared. So yeah. let's work on changing that story. Absolutely. Well, Danielle, I have to tell you, um, you, my, you, my friend have a lot of strengths and gifts to give, and I know you're I humble, that. I know you're humble, <laughs> which is why we're going to celebrate you a little bit. But I think what's, what's one thing that you do that's very unique, that's different from other people I know mm -hmm. is kind of your ability to, you know, eliminate fear of the unknown, but in a really safe and Thank a you. really celebratory way. Thank you. And in the world that we're negotiating right now, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of yeah. othering. There's a lot of those people. Those people. And I just don't think that... Little Connor needs to be a part of any of those groups. And so I want to thank you. I want to thank you because, <laughs> you know, as much as you may love me, I love you twice as much because you're fighting for our kids in our community without even having a kid mm. with Down syndrome, you know, and you, but because you're seeing, you're coming from a genuine place of love. I just sometimes, and that's me important. Awake at night. <laughs> I just, we all know how you love to sleep. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I don't know why this path found me, but it found me, and now I'm never getting off. Yeah. Especially now that I met the mothers. Oh, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, a little special shout out to our friend Tamara Taggart. Tamara Taggart, we love you. Yeah, go look up Tamara. Um, she's also a really incredible boy, voice for disability. In she is. And uh, maybe I'll get her on the podcast one day. You should. I said, right, Tamara, if you're yeah. listening to this, uh, now you gotta. Now, <laughs> now you, you gotta. gotta. Yeah, balls in your court, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, know, you know what's so funny? Jessica's like, I think Tamara Taggart's dog goes to Bowen Island for he dog does. daycare, right? He does. And so she's like, maybe can you phone Tamara and see when, when Georgie's there oh. so that our dogs can go and they can be Because don't you have the same Arendelle? We uh, have Irish Terriers. Irish Terriers, like, yes. Okay. She's like, maybe they could like play together. I'm like, you know what? I bet Tamara would be all over that. Absolutely. So Tamara, this is like a little Tamara corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Okay, so how many of you want to hang out with uh, little Connor and his family? Because is he not the... I, I, here's the problem with podcasting is you can't see. And you have to see this kid. Like the whole time we were interviewing, like when I was talking to Daniel's mom, he's sitting there. He's sitting there and blowing kisses and high-fiving and just being his cute little sassy self. Yeah, that's I did I did post a little video, but we gotta try and find a little bit more. I honestly think he needs a little YouTube channel. Um so a few takeaways. Um <laughs> there's just so much that like usually I'll write down quotes that people say because they're just such they're so good. Um I just I love I love Danielle. I love how she has, you know, worked to bring out the best in Connor, but the part that I really love is how she works to bring out the best of in the community that Connor is a part of, which is one of the biggest takeaways that I have today is, you know, how can our advocacy for students who have disabilities actually start to include the advocacy of the communities that they're involved in? Because that's how you're going to start like building those little miniature advocates and, you know, as parents, we can't always I mean not me but you know other people you can't always be everywhere and you know even Danielle was talking about how like that a whole vulnerability of you know letting go and letting sending your kids off worried worried that they won't be seen for what they are and the gifts that they bring and so you know the more places that we can develop little advocates who can start to you know s you know help Connor and his voice and his and his strengths to see other people to see what those are you know the more places that kids can feel that belonging and success um we can't be everywhere and it's not good for our parents to be everywhere with us either and so it's really building building the capacity of our communities to support each other and everyone and that's for all kids um 
I also liked the part when I was talking to Danielle about, you know, it's okay when things are hard. This is a question that's coming up. Um, I, I know I've mentioned before just the conversation we're having around IEPs. And, and you know, I, I'm not alone in thinking that we need to, like, explode IEPs. Um, it's time for them to evolve. It is no longer okay that these are documents that just focus on deficits and these kind of medical documents. You know, the curriculum is changing for all kids. They also have to, ch to change for kids with disabilities. And so one of these things, and I think this is really misunderstood, is that very often, um, as we know, IEPs focus on things that are wrong. But then almost the reaction to that has been, oh, well, we don't have to we also don't have to work on things that are hard. And this was a misunderstanding I had with a parent once where she was just like, OK, so my kid can't read. So then you're never going to work on reading or my kid has a hard time reading. So you just you're never going to work on it. And I'm just like, no, 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 that's not what we're saying at all. Like everyone can be a reader. Everyone, you know, everyone has the ability to learn, but it's the difference between saying we're going to focus on your reading um, and get better at reading versus you um, have to stop being anxious. Right. Like that doesn't like, you know, I, I have a lot of anxiety and that's not just going to go away, you know, but if we're only focusing on those things that, um, that maybe we don't have a lot of control over, well, no wonder people aren't a feeling success at school. So, you know, but at the other hand, like it's also understanding that people are very, very capable. Connor is very, very capable. Connor is going to learn how to read. He is a learner. Um, he has intellectual skills that need to be developed and that that's going to be hard. Absolutely. But you know, it's hard for all kids. And so it's a very fine line between presuming competence, but also not over focusing on things that we have no control over. And it's the difference in my mind is the difference between, um, strengths and or sorry stretches and weaknesses and I kind of even want to evolve that idea of weaknesses even just to needs you know I think about you know I have strengths in certain areas I have stretches in certain areas and I have needs right and these are the things we need to support but just because I'm anxious doesn't mean I'm weak and, and I think that that is something that we need to really really carry forward um, I, I don't think weaknesses is an appropriate term ever however um, we have needs and as soon as you zoom out to see that you're like well all of us have needs right I have I have anxiety that needs to be managed all the time and you know and if you think about about our kids that way you realize this isn't just about disabilities anymore it's how do we find strengths how do we you know figure out what to target because these things are hard for us but we got to do them and what are the things we need to support because they're out of our control and you know I think that uh, Danielle had, a, had really really pointed that out nicely she's like you know it's, it's okay that things are hard for Connor um, we're going to work on them because the more we work on them the the better he's going to get at it and I think that is really the lens that I want to start looking um, for for planning for, for some of our kids who are the hardest to reach um, the other big idea that Danielle targets on is the idea of fear and you know I think that it you know, if speaking to kind of the adult generation that exists right now, many of us didn't go to school with kids like Connor. I know I didn't go to school with kids like Connor, and I feel like I really missed out because the Connors out there are just these beautiful humans. Um, but, you know, I think that part of that is, is because a lot of us didn't grow up with disability in the same way that kids are now, there is a huge unknown and there is an element of fear there. And, you know, I love when Danielle says, she's just like, you know, it's okay that you're fearful. It's okay that you don't know, but then you have to make a change. Then you have to act Then you need to move on. We need to be better. And that's not on the kids. That's on us. And it's one, you know, that switch, that um, perspective change to say, you know what, it, it's okay that I don't know, but you know, I'm going to get better at this because I need to know that costs nothing. You know, it, it's, it's one of the easiest and the hardest things to do is that perspective shifting. I remember the moment that it changed for me and it cost nothing. There was no funding. There's no resources needed because shifting a perspective is something that only the person um, can do them themselves. And, and so I think that that commitment and that call to action to say like, let's get better at this, you know, not just in our practice, but also in our, you know, shifting and believing that kids have things to contribute, even though it's hard and that's okay. Um, I love that this was like real life. Like we had a podcast and there is Ellen in the background. There is popsicles and YouTube in the background. Like this is a family. This is an everyday family. And all of us are working with everyday families and what that looks like on a Saturday. And so, you know, I want them to spend their Saturdays talking about the great things that happened in the week and not the frustrating things at school. And I, and I think that school is has become frustrating for a lot of families. Um, and I think it's a privilege sometimes that we overlook um, when we have kids that 
go to school and never have to worry about the phone calls and never have to worry about the IEP meetings, never have to worry about, you know, getting phone calls because of behavior. Like I think uh, if we're not, if, if we're, if we're not people or adults that have to negotiate that, it really puts us in a, in a place of privilege. And, and what I say, what I mean when I say that is that if we're in that position of privilege, it's our responsibility to reach out to make sure that schools and classrooms are more accessible to the people who don't experience that privilege. And I know that this sometimes gets misunderstood with, well, we can't do it because we don't have resources or funding. And I'm not saying that we don't need resources and funding and time and people. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that, you know, there's a lot of resources out there that um, could be used more optimally. Of course, we need more resources, but all of this all of this relies on one thing and that is our ability to fight for kids and if we are going to look for the reasons why inclusion can't happen are we going to look for the reasons why kids can't do something it doesn't matter what resources we have they're not going to be used in optimal ways and so one thing I think we can all learn from Connor is that you know seeing Connor's ability and seeing Honor's strengths and seeing Connor's um contribution to his community is something that costs nothing and so now once we've seen that we're like yes he has this now how we can support him and his community and his teachers and his school to be able to harness that and then you start to realize that there's a lot of resources that probably aren't being used optimally to make that happen and so this is kind of a big question that I'm trying to uh, kind of push at the, the infrastructural level of all systems of education, classrooms and schools, and um, even, you know, provincially and, and, and districts to say, you know, in all of these conversations about what's missing, like we're also missing the conversation about who we're actually talking about. And so I, 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 Connor has this face that I carry with me all the time. He has the best smile. He has this beautiful, kind soul. And I don't want those faces to get lost in all of these conversations. And and so I think that just a little check in to say, okay, these, these are our kids. We have to carry them with us. Um, and Danielle said this too, like, he's so kind. Connor's so kind in the world, just needs so much more of that. And it's, it's absolutely, absolutely the case. Um, let's see. So Danielle talked about some ways to support Connor um, and to support his community. She had a uh, Connor profile, which I'll post. She also wrote a letter to the parents of his classroom. And she also wrote uh, thank you cards to parents and to kids. And uh, so I'll post all of those because I think that's a really, really great example of ways that we can find uh, ways to support a community to support a kid. I think I'm going to I'm going to finish this off with this quote because, you know, there was there's a lot in there to unpack. But I think this quote, it, it kind of nails it, kind of nails it in the world of uh, the world of inclusion. Uh, there are so many things to be upset about in the world. Having a child with Down syndrome is not one of them. And uh, I really, I really, really believe that. And I, so, so I hope that uh, this conversation with Danielle and Connor, um, we can carry it close to our hearts because I think that this is the, this is the story of a real family. And, um, and I think it represents many families out there and to keep them in, in our hearts as we're going about this education shift and special education change. Uh, because it, it affects them on Saturday mornings when they are trying to watch Ellen. Oh, and I also, uh, Disney Plus, because they're watching Pollyanna, which is the greatest. Um, you know, because that's the real life. That That's real life. And so I want to thank all of you for listening. I want to thank all of you for your baked potatoes. I want to thank all of you for your questions and your feedback and your tweets, um, because it helps me to not feel so alone. Sometimes this job gets a little overwhelming when you're trying to change a system and change the world. And, you know, sometimes it's not the ones that follow you that are the loudest. And so I want to thank, thank you for your support and thank you for your genuine, genuine um, conversations. And sometimes Sometimes those conversations are hard and, and so I appreciate um, the 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 respect and I appreciate the um, just the the, the the kind of critical nature of the conversations that we can talk about these things it, it's okay that it's hard but at the end of the day um, our conversations have to move forward. We can't keep getting stuck in the yeah buts or this can't work or here's all the reasons why this can't work or we're just not going to move. And so uh, I'm, my call to action for you today is to, you know, which side of history do you want to be on? And, you know, we're moving and we're on a bus and we invite you to join um, our movements. And, uh, 
And there's a lot of us and every week I'm reminded of how many of us are who are moving forward on this journey. And we're doing it for the Connors, and we're doing it for the Daniels, and we're doing it for the teachers out there who are working hard and who believe in this and the principals and the administrators. And uh, what I what I really appreciate about this, this community that we're forming is that it's helping us see each other to not feel like we're so alone. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, stay tuned, Coffee and Eggs, December 1st, we will look at another inclusion strategy. Um, you are all fantastic. Go eat a baked potato. And uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Five More Minutes is produced by Shelley Moore and Paul Madsen. You can find Five More Minutes on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and on fivemoreminutes.com. <laughs>